Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another NBA 2K14 micro gameplay with Danny Tice and the New York Knicks. Danny Tice hoping to hit a home run in this game, hoping to have a great performance, but he's going to have to worry about his defense because he's going against Tony Parker coming off a of finals appearance and playing as well as he ever has in his career. So hopefully we can, you know, contain Parker, but Tony Parker is one of the hardest players to guard because he runs around so many screens that it could just tire you defensively, and auto, uh, when you get tired defensively, it takes away from your offensive game, so don't expect Danny to do much scoring. Danny doesn't do much scoring in the first place. Danny's still trying to figure out, you know, trying to get confidence in his jump shot, trying to learn when and where and, like, how, you know, all those, all those questions about where he should take jump shots and, like, what situations, stuff like that, and when he should defer to his teammates, so... For the most part, we'll be deferring the teammates. There, I got my handle stripped by Kawhi Leonard, who is known for doing that kind of stuff. Kawhi is one of the better defensive players in the league, and this is a weird sequence. Somehow, Patty Mills ends up with the ball, and my teammate Greg gets to go down. Don't you just hate when that happens, when a teammate Greg goes down for, like, un unnecessary stuff like that? Like, <laughs> the ball just happens to go to your guy while you're trying to battle for it. Like, I'm, I'm fighting hard for the damn ball. Come on, man. And Tiago Splitter was also fighting hard for the ball. He ended up with the ball a lot. Splitter had a monster game for like no reason, you'll see. But um, you know, this game it's working out alright so far. In the second quarter, we just started taking off. Raymond Felton had pretty much nothing to do with it. He had one three-pointer, but that was about it. I'm trying to take Felton's starting job right now. I have my eyes straight set on Felton's starting job because Felton has not been playing good. As you see, two for eight shooting. And it's that's been a trend so far early in the season. Felton's had some rough games, especially shooting and I feel like I could personally change that. You know, as a rookie, that might be maybe a little bit too much confidence, but you never know. And here, I get caught behind so much screens. We'll get Amari right there. Oh, Amari. And then we pass it off to Carmelo, and Carmelo dunks it right after Amari. Got a dunk of his own on the last possession. Here, I believe that, I'm not sure it's Hardaway or what. Somebody was just dribbling the ball around. Look at Denny knocking down the shot, and J.R. Smith actually got injured. I didn't realize him until, like, after this game, I believe. He got injured, and he's out for, like, two to four weeks. So, there's going to be no JR for the next few videos. In the meantime, um, we replaced JR with some guy named Jeremy Tyler on the roster. But, you're probably just going to see more Hardaway and more Shumpert in the meantime. As, oh, Amari. Hopefully, Amari doesn't do that. He just did a backcourt violation there. And I, I said Amari. I meant Tim Hardaway, not Amari. So, Tim Hardaway and Shumpert. So, we're going to the halftime. We have a nine-point lead against the Spurs. And when I come out after halftime, our lead grows tremendously. Now, we're up by, what, 16 points. So, feeling good about this game. Same time, we are playing the Spurs. But, I feel good about this game. When you have a lead, it's easier to get adapted. Because, you know, you could run the game at your pace instead of trying to play catch-up. As a rookie, that's very important. So, we're going to hopefully play the game at our own pace and knock down some shots like this one. Boom. Then he knocks down the three right there. His second three of the game gives him six overall. This time, we dish out to Mel, but Mel cannot finish. Mel, Mel's, some, Mel's like a 50-50 proposition for finishing shots like that. But Mel kind of ruined their team for a little bit. Like, his isolation play, I won't show you all his iso plays, but there was one of, like, the worst. That was probably the worst one out of this little mini run the Spurs went on. Like, Melo just had a bunch of bad isolation plays. And Splitter just went to beast mode. Like, complete beast mode. He, this whole game, Splitter was offensive rebounding, he was putting back, he was just finishing tough layups in general, and I don't know why our biggest problem was guarding Thiago Splitter and wasn't Parker, Manu, or Duncan, but Splitter was the guy. You see 20 points, 10 for 12 shooting, and 10 rebounds, but he also has four fouls, so we're going to try to get that factored in. Meanwhile, my defense on Parker, you know, I haven't really played Parker much, surprisingly. I've been playing against Patty Mills more, and Patty Mills, I didn't expect to play against Patty Mills, and I didn't know how the hell he played, so Patty Mills is like kind of burning me up in this game. I'm still trying to figure it out, and Patty Mills took advantage of that. And then he misses that shot there, and you see the Spurs have come back. We had that 16-point lead, and all of a sudden, it's a 5-point lead. Though Manu throws a reckless pass to Tony Parker, who cannot hang on, and that is a turnover. Here in the fourth quarter, once again, Denny Tice playing crunch time minutes. Throwing to Amari Stoudemire, who gets the tough finish to go. That's just Amari. That's what Amari does, but this is what Manu does, knocking down shots like that. Three-pointer. I thought it might be a two, but it was a three-pointer. Here, Denny gets double teamed. He makes the beautiful read. Well, actually, Carmelo makes the beautiful read. To find Shumper, but Shumper cannot get the bucket to go. But Tyson Chandler does get the putback. And Tyson Chandler, I don't think he, he made one of his free throws, I think. And look at this fast break. Glob it up to Shumper. Look at Shumper, man. That's going to be fun. Shumper is going to make that alley-oop. We're going to have a fun year in New York. 
And here Tony Parker, I get caught reaching, and Tony Parker takes it for a beautiful, God knows what kind of layup, but he gets that there. And that was the opposite of beautiful. What the hell was that? Chandler just threw it away to Parker. You see my field goal percentage is pretty bad, not having a good shooting game, so I'm going to defer to my teammates, but what a beautiful rejection by Tiago Splitter on Amari. Tony Parker just a one-man fast break, loses the ball, but I believe Kawhi Leonard picked it up and got it back. Though on the other end, I give it to Carmelo, and Carmelo, the bang and the bucket. And that fouls out Tiago Splitter and gives us a six-point lead with 3.37 left. A huge possession with the Spurs trying to come back. And here, Denny Tice strips Tony Parker, gets the steal, gives it to Carmelo, but Carmelo cannot finish that layup with Kawhi Leonard all over him. Next play, out to Kawhi, and Kawhi does it on the offensive end as well. Knocks down the three-pointer, and then Coach Woodson takes Denny Tice out the game for Raymond Felton, and we lose the game by one. So... That's pretty disappointing because I felt like if I stayed on the floor, we would have probably won that game. Instead, we end up losing it. And now I'm definitely thinking I, I want Raymond Felton's starting job right now. I want to be the starter of this team. I feel like I give the team the best opportunity to win this game. And when we start losing games like that, that's when I really feel like doing it. You see, I signed with um, Team Jordan as far as the shoe deal. And yeah, so that's that. Hope you guys leave a like in this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more Denny Tices. Hopefully, we could grab the starting job soon from Raymond Felton. You see, we're at 28 minutes a game. We're also close. And I will catch you guys next time.